Welcome to Math Memo. This is 1959 IMO problem number 4. We're asked to construct a right-angled triangle with the given hypotenuse C such that the median drawn to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean of the other two legs of the triangle. We'd like to thank the art of problem solving for the backbone of this solution, one of many in fact. And you can check out this solution and the others in the link in the description below. Let's begin by recalling the definition of geometric mean, which is the nth root of the product of n numbers, which can be expressed in formula like so. In our case, n is equal to 2 because we have two legs or two, two elements, and we've used m to denote the median drawn to the hypotenuse in the diagram shown. And Let's let L1 be leg 1 and L2 be leg 2. And in this case, M would be equal to the square root of L1, L2, or as per the above notation, L1, L2 raised to the power of a half. So we have a relationship here between M and L1 and L2. And this is the constraint on our construction. And we want to use it to construct our triangle. One way to go about setting up for this construction is to think about the triangle as being inscribed in a circle. Because we're given the length of C, the hypotenuse, we're given already two points of the triangle where the hypotenuse begins and where it ends. And all we have to do is find that third point, that third point along the circumference of the circle. To find that third point, which is the right angle, we are going to use the altitude from the right angle to the hypotenuse, which is being drawn in in a different color. And if we can find h in terms of c, then we'll know the perpendicular distance of the point to the given hypotenuse. So we'll know where our third point is. We can find h in terms of c by considering the area of the triangle in two different ways. If area is equal to half base times height, we can first think of base and height as the two legs of the triangle, so half L1, L2. But of course, it can also be expressed as half c times h, which is using h as the altitude of the um, triangle and c, the hypotenuse, as the base. And we also know that m is equal to the square root of L1, L2. So L1, L2 is m squared. Substituting that in, we have half m squared is equal to half c times h. At this stage, if we can find a relationship between m and c, then we'll be able to have this entire expression in terms of only c and h, and we'll have found our h in terms of c. To do this, let's consider that the rectangle were made up of two, two congruent right angle triangles. And we know that the diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. So we know that c, which is the length of a diagonal, and m, which is um, a bisected, the length of a bisected diagonal, that m must be half c. So this is our relationship between m and c. And when we substitute that back in, we find half a quarter c squared is equal to half c times h. And then finally, we'll have our desired expression of h in terms of c, which is h equals a quarter c. And at this stage, we're essentially done. We, we have everything we need, and now all we have to do is to actually construct our triangle. So now we're thinking about geometric construction. To help us with our construction, let's get up a circle. Here we're using drawing software, but of course if we didn't have software we'd just use a compass, which is just as reliable. And let's set our diameter as 
as the hypotenuse as C. Why would this be the case? Because the hypotenuse subtends an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. And so by the angle in a semicircle theorem, the hypotenuse must be the diameter. How would we go about finding finding h then because remember h is a quarter of of c so half of c we'll know is the radius how would we find a quarter of c well to do this we there's a nifty trick in construction which is to draw two different congruent circles one with its center at the circumference and one with its center at the center of the big circle. So let's try to do that. Here we're drawing a circle with its center at the, um, the point on the circumference of the diameter. And here we're drawing the same circle with its center at the center of the original circle. Mm -hmm. Let's get that in. And now, the points of intersections of these two circles, they form a line. And this line will cut the radius in half. And half of the radius we know is a quarter of the diameter. So this is, this will help us to find the length of h. And now we can go about um, removing all the construction lines that helped us to get to this stage. And yep, we're left with this blue line here. And from the center of the circle to the blue line, that is H. That is a quarter C. Our triangle needs to have its third point along the circumference of this big circle. So we're trying to find the point along the circumference of this circle, which is which is h away from which is h away from um, from the the diameter. So to do this, let's get up this circle here in blue where the radius of this circle is h. So the radius of this circle is a quarter the diameter of the big circle. And now let's draw a line parallel to the diameter, so parallel to the hypotenuse C and tangent to this blue circle. So if it's tangent to this blue circle, it'll be at an angle of 90 degrees, um, 90 degrees to, um, it'll be perpendicular to, to the radius. And the radius of that blue circle is H. So now all the points along that blue line that we've just drawn is a distance of H from the diameter of the big circle. And now all we have to do is take the point where that blue line intersects the circle. And that is our third point for the triangle. So let's draw that in. And there we have it, a, a right angle triangle with hypotenuse C, which is the diameter, and altitude H, which is a quarter C. And this will satisfy the requirements of the median to the hypotenuse being the geometric mean of the two legs of the triangle.